Hello. I'm here today with my good friend Rajesh. How are you, Rajesh? Hello, Ken. I'm good to meet with you once again. Yes, it's great to see you. Uh, well, today we're going to talk a little bit about a really exciting project that you've launched, uh, one of your many different uh, uh, educational and uh, motivational kind of projects um, called Napkin Sites, and I'm excited about that. But why don't we start off, you and I go way back, why don't we start off by telling the audience a little bit about uh, how we met and, uh, and our background, and maybe you start and I'll I'll kind of add and we'll get people uh know the background between the two of us. If I, two more years, it will be our 25th anniversary of knowing each other, Kenan. We're not that old, are we? <laughs> <laughs> but mentally, I'm only 23. I'm in the beginner's mind. <laughs> I love that. When I was uh, starting my first company here in 2000 called Signex with four other founders and you were one of the first investors and first person who believed in us. It's always a special moment for me, a special place in my heart. I remember that well, I, and I, I believed in you tremendously because I had started a services company and I wanted you to work on that one. <laughs> and you said, hey, I have this idea. I have, I'm drawn toward open source and I've got a team together. And you had so much passion and so much will. You were absolutely right. I remember I, I became the chairman. I wrote the first check. I gave you office space and... You know, you didn't disappoint. You guys, uh, you guys built it out, uh, built it out nicely. Thank you. And we also, I remember one more thing, Kenan. We played table tennis a lot, and then uh, it was fun. We play work. Everything was fun for us. Yes. No. Absolutely. We were both. Uh, we both. We were both uh, very young and very entrepreneurial. We both still are very entrepreneurial. So that's great. Which leads me to uh, this project. Um, it's great. You have it in the background of you, but I was just lucky enough to receive my first copy of Napkin Sites. Um, one of the things I should mention is that, you know, you're you're pretty well known, but for people that don't know, you're you're a pretty prolific entrepreneur. But more than that, you're probably one of the most creative people I know. Um, and you are author of, I believe, 20 books, um, starting when you were very young. Um, and uh it's always amazing to me how you have this amazing way of playing with words, almost creating puns. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's great to, to see that. And I see in this product, a lot of that's coming out of it. Um, I kind of, I, when I look at it, I don't want to give it away, but basically I see you as Peter Drucker meets Tony Robbins with a little bit of Deepak Chopra thrown in. So, so there's, there's the Eastern wisdom of Deepak, but there's the motivational of Tony Robbins. And then there's real practical management uh, insight into, into this thing. Tell me a little bit about how this idea came to, came to play. This, this, the, the, for people that don't know, Napkin Sites is, you know, it's kind of legendary lore that when you're in a, in a restaurant and you have a great idea, you write a note on a napkin and that could go on to, to see many different things. So tell us a little bit about how this project came to be, Rajesh. I wish I was behind it and I have to thank God and thank for luck because I got diagnosed with Parkinson's in twenty late 2013, Kenan. It's been 10 year adventure. I call it Parkinson's. Because I love I that. Yeah. The brain. And then they always are sparking electricity to keep my body in motion. Now, but can, can we just stop right there? See, that little thing just summarizes you in a nutshell, which is, Parkinson's is like the C word, the cancer word. It's like it brings dread to people's mind and they have they go right to a place. Just by changing that to Parkinson's, you kind of reframed it into something that can be positive and can can do your ovulation. So I uh, I love that. And that's kind of signature Shetty, uh, the way you you coined that term. But 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 go on with uh, napkin sites here. So I used to write every single day at least a page, and since I was 10 years old, I don't publish everything I write because then people will think, what is this useless person doing, always writing, when will it do, run the company? right? So I always was very conscious how much I publish. But as the disease sort of progress, progress is a wrong term, it is sort of, I regressed and the disease progressed. And then I lost my ability to write. 
basically i could not to wow. write a sentence it would take me about uh, 15 to 40 minutes depending on the day of the time oh my so god so writing a page i can't type because any key 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 stroke i click it will be double or triple clicked and then i would frustrate the hell out of me so only thing i used to do was i used to mostly not mobile i could either do deep meditation or deep thinking every day when i finish my meditation whatever came to my mind can and i would write it one uh, great difficulty i would write one sentence or two sentences and my son sumu could uh, take a photo and post it on facebook and it became the journey called napkin sites and That's amazing uh, so it was it was inspiration but it was also very practical <laughs> given the circumstances <laughs> yeah and I, my goal kanan was to write about 100 napkin sites in 100 days because i need some goals to motivate me to keep going yes and i finished it in like 62 days and then i upgraded the goal to i'll make 250 napkin sites and then now i have 3500 plus napkin sites this is the collection of those uh, 250 of the best ones i collected and volume one is that a collection of those 250 napkin sets i love it i love it and i and i think that when people find when they see the product it's it actually brings it's a it's a very good growth tool it's a very good tool for bringing out as someone as an entrepreneur like me who started five companies over my career um it bring to build a great culture you have to have some great truths so what i thought we do is I, since I have my book and I'm very happy with it, I'll pick a couple kind of at random and let's uh, you and me talk about uh, kind of what what it means uh, for both of us, and so people can get a sense of what they're getting. So let's see here. I'll just open it up to one. Okay, this one says, "If you don't know who your customers are, how good your product is doesn't matter much." Wow. I'll tell you, I I, I really like this one. You know, um, I've always been part of building B to B businesses, selling into enterprise customers, and I've always said if you're a B to B vendor and you don't know your customer's business at least as well as your customer, you don't have a chance. Uh, because, uh, in, in fact, right now the best vendors are actually creating best practices for industries, and people follow their flow. So uh that's pretty good. I know that you've always been uh focused on uh on customers uh and customer pains. What does that what does that one mean uh for you Rajesh? You know, one of the things we both meet a lot of entrepreneurs kind of sometimes you know people say that uh, who is this for and people say it's for everyone. If yeah. it's for everyone it's for no one. Yeah. It can be applicable for everyone but it has to it resonates very well with the set of people. who think who will miss it in the past i say miss it in the past because they can think that if it was if this product or service was there before 10 years ago my life would have been different for me to for the customers to fall in love they have to miss it in the past and if the product clicks then they can just not be able to live without it i love it i love it so, that's yeah let me try it let me try another one here um okay let's see here so it says Uh, you won't realize what a blessing your life has been until you start acknowledging the gifts you have taken for granted and appreciating the lessons your struggle have taught you wow it's so closely to me because i learned the greatest amount of learning happened after i started my adventure with parkinsons because so many things you take for granted your body you take for granted until uh, something is uh, wrong with it yes and so- relationships you take for granted until they are no longer there for me the greatest university is the parkinson's university kind of that's amazing i mean i you know i this is this is so powerful because i believe that gratitude is really a superpower uh and it just upscales your whole frame of mind um so when you're founding companies when you're building companies there's so many things that have emotional highs and lows uh to to keep that perspective of gratitude is kind of the one thing that's going to get you through it all i mean even this yeah. call think about it for this call to happen we are using zoom here but we didn't do anything about it we yeah. didn't it, we didn't invest in it but uh, we just one click and then we are using it and yeah. for us to 
this conversation we have relationship which spans over two decades so everything has to come together and if we think that we did it that the biggest hubris hubris has uh, comment that you can make so it gratitude is way to be humble i love it i love it. that's great that's great okay let's try one more here oh this one says um when uh time could get you let's see here it says time could get you money but vice versa is an impossible act money versus time yes because we, i am no longer uh, considered as young i can never get back to anything that uh, i lost so my thinking is there is a term in uh, japanese called ichigo ichi so ichigo ichi means this moment can never be recreated this moment is special and wow. this moment this yeah. particular moment can and we both are talking is very special because it you can never go back to this moment so when that something is happening so special I always think you should have the reverence as if we are in a temple or a worship place of worship only then you can see the present only if you are present to that kind of presence about how what kind of a present it is to you in your life is then your life is a blessing unbelievable you know this is uh that idea of being present and being in the moment uh you know one of my favorite books i've given probably 20 copies out is by ram das be here now which is all about being in the present moment but in in fact this card this napkin site um gives us a very clear truth which is that time trumps money right in fact the best use of money is to use it to get yourself more time by outsourcing delegating using tasks you know we have all these companies like thumb thumb tack task rabbit this is all a way of you getting more time by delegating and being able to do it so yes time trumps money that's that's uh that's awesome and being in the present moment is uh is everything so these this is what i mean these 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 cards are they're very deep when they come into kind of thinking about things philosophically but they're also very practical in terms of how people can put into into motion in their day so let's try uh one more here okay this one says you can probably get someone's attention with your head however convert that attention into a relationship your heart has to be in the right place talk to me about head versus heart See, the the greatest connections for me in my life have been hard connections kind of see sometimes people say have hacks and tricks and tips and techniques to get attention but that can only be short living if the heart connects heart if the heart is not in the right place so my thinking is why take a hack go with the right intent i always believe that if uh, can we live in a place in a mode that all your intentions are published will you still be okay with it <laughs> that's it that yeah that's a, that's a hard one for most people I, I i will tell you a quick story when i was uh much younger and i was doing my second company and it was a co-ceo situation and i was co-ceo with uh, another guy harvard uh biz school and i thought i was on point i was very sharp and razor edge i had all the answers whereas my my counterpart I don't want to say he was more formal but he always would be more soliciting and 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 not being sure and and that vulnerability you know actually made him more popular and in fact he did I remember being crushed and it was and I was clearly following my head and uh he kind of had a more of a heartfelt approach to to things so um you know I, it was it was devastating at the time but I will definitely tell you that heart Trump's mind. <laughs> no, I met a person called Riti Srivastava in my last trip to India. We called an event called Soul uh, Celebrate, Soul Soul Celebration. And then she is uh, she runs a company called Founder Nest, which is all about co-founder conflicts. And then I learned something very special there. The first thing she does with co-founders is she gives a word and then ask them to write what does it mean to them. let's say start up what does a start up mean to you both of them write both are two three four people they write independently and then she finds she, she brings them all together and they found that the same word means so different to different people yeah, yeah. it's so true 
if it means something different then you will uh, act differently because the meaning is different for you already there is a scope for conflicts if you don't uh, agree on the or on the same page on a word a simple word like startup yeah you know it's it's so it's so true even in even in today's society if we look at our society unfortunately we're living in a time where there's a couple major wars going on and and people have points of view on each side and and the reality is is that people can't even agree on the facts on the ground before you can form your opinion so if we if we how can you and i agree on an opinion if we don't agree on the facts <laughs> and so uh this this is uh this is very true you've got to have some notion of what it is that that is common among everyone to form some kind of uh consensus uh um, right. This is uh, this is great. Okay, let's try one more here. I can through my book. Okay, this one is, oh, this is interesting. This is a graph. It says the no graph. And if it's a no, it's better to know now. And it's kind of a descending graph. Wow, this is so true. I say this all the time in sales situations, which is that a quick no is so much better than a slow maybe. <laughs> you know, we all want to keep the hope going on, but... Uh, there's, also, there's value to a quick no. Also, the problem with uh, many first-time entrepreneurs, can and because they don't want to, there is a rule, there is a saying in motivational saying, don't accept the no. But then uh, to what end? Yeah. Right. Uh, every time you think that there is hope, and then you keep working on it, it becomes at some point it becomes an opportunity cost. And mm -hmm. only with maturity, one can know what is an opportunity cost, what is good to persist, and what is an opportunity cost and not to persist anymore. Yeah, yeah. No, 100%, 100%. These, uh, these, these, I'm going to call these shots of wisdom in this book. Um, and it's, it's great uh, uh, that people can use this kind of, uh, not just philosophically, but actually in a practical way. Um, and I know uh, one of the things, so what we're going to do is we're going to put, uh, it's a very nice package. We're going to put a link at the bottom so people can order it uh, directly, get it shipped to you. Uh, it's a very nice book, very nice layout. And Rajesh, what it does is it it pulls out your wisdom, which hopefully will keep flowing, uh, and puts it into little bite-sized uh, uh, tidbits that people can uh, digest. So I, so I love it. Um, I you have... I think one thing I have to make it clear that it's not my wisdom, it's universe. It just channeled through me and then I don't want to take credit for it. After my meditation, whatever comes, I write. It yeah. must be God's wisdom or universe, universe wisdom. I'm just a uh, person who writes it. Well, whatever it is, we're we're lucky. We're lucky to have you. As I told, as I said at the beginning of this interview, you're one of the most creative people I know. Uh, and it's been a pleasure watching you thrive and face adversity and then come on top of it smiling what i what i have to say that is also very uh exciting for me is to watch your career in stand-up comedy just really take flight uh you you've used your uh, wit your wisdom and your observational humor to the uh to really uh make people laugh and for that we all thank you and i'm gonna we're gonna put links down at the bottom for your comedy shows i think you call it the bionic comedy show uh that's it's fantastic um and then i look forward to having you back um uh, you've just uh, uh in the process of releasing your i want to say your autobiography called unshaken and i can't wait uh I, i've read a preview an early copy and i can't wait to discuss it with you and share it with our audience so that's going to be great too rajesh so great to see you so great to see you my friend